According to statistics, only a small percentage of you who watch our videos are actually subscribed. If you're not subscribed yet and you enjoy what you see, do consider hitting the subscribe button. This encourages YouTube's algorithm in promoting more of our mental health content to more people out there. Hey, Psych2Goers, have you ever noticed a friend who always cancels plans last minute? Some people may feel that this is rude. However, this might be a sign of social anxiety disorder, not rudeness. Everyone experiences some level of social anxiousness at one time or another, but those with social anxiety disorder experience above average levels of worry, fear, and panic in social situations. Before we begin, this video is for educational purposes only and is not a substitute for professional guidance, advice, treatment, or diagnosis. If you relate to this video, we advise you to consult a mental health professional for help. To raise awareness about social anxiety, let's look at 10 signs it's social anxiety, not rudeness. Number one, struggling to make eye contact. Often, people with social anxiety disorder describe looking someone in the eyes as anxiety-provoking and uncomfortable. This is likely due to genetic wiring. People diagnosed with social anxiety disorder have a pronounced fear of direct eye contact. If you have social anxiety, the part of your brain that warns you of danger can be triggered by eye contact. Number two, not eating food because they're afraid it may get stuck in their teeth. Do you have a fear of eating in front of others? Some questions that may run through your head include, what if I spill my food or drink? What if I choke or draw attention to myself? The fear of eating in front of others can interfere with your social life and even school or work. Socializing usually includes some form of food or drink. Business meetings sometimes take place over lunch or dinner. School cafeterias can be crowded. Fear of eating and drinking in front of others can be triggered by a wide variety of situations, foods, and dining companions. Number three, canceling plans last minute. Do you or someone you know frequently cancel plans last minute? You may become sucked into a cycle of anxious, overwhelming thoughts and back out at the last minute. For example, what if my friends think I'm boring or awkward? According to a licensed psychotherapist in Hoboken, New Jersey, Courtney Glashow, LCSW, found that these overwhelming anxious thoughts can be challenged using cognitive behavioral therapy. It helps to reframe your worrying thoughts so that you feel more at ease about interacting with other people. Number four, shutting down in a group setting. Do you remain silent in group settings because you're afraid you'll be judged about what you say? When you suffer from social anxiety, you tend to avoid social situations and shut down in a group setting. You shut down not because you're rude, but because of the intense fear of embarrassment. People without social anxiety usually brush off an awkward social moment and move on. However, when you make a mistake in a social setting, you spend days or even months replaying the mistake in your head. Number five, having an outburst over something others consider small. Do you sometimes find yourself having an angry outburst towards something only mildly irritating? Those with social anxiety may have difficulty falling asleep or staying asleep and become sleep deprived. Over time, lack of sleep can trigger individuals to become more sensitive to small problems and quick to anger. Yelling at the dog for barking, becoming angry in traffic, getting upset because of a long line at the grocery store, or lashing out over an honest mistake are all small triggers that turn into monumental challenges for an individual who is struggling with social anxiety. Being mindful of anger outbursts by keeping a journal and taking time to reflect on why this anger occurred can often help individuals realize their anxiety triggers. Number six, being glued to the phone or social media. Do you pull out your phone anytime you're around people you don't know? Phones or social media are a distraction that those with social anxiety frequently use to take their mind off of overwhelming thoughts. You may feel like everyone is judging you, so taking out your phone distracts you and helps you escape. Number seven, struggling to open up and have a deeper conversation. Underlying social anxiety disorder is the fear of being scrutinized, judged, or embarrassed by others. You may be afraid that people will think badly of you or that you won't measure up in comparison to others. Therefore, you'll struggle to open up and have a deeper conversation. Even though you probably realize that your fears of being judged are somewhat irrational and overblown, you still can't help but feel anxious. Number eight, leaving a party early. Do you always worry that you'll embarrass yourself or people around you might be embarrassed by you? People with social anxiety might be intimidated by the idea of parties because they overthink about how others are scrutinizing and judging them harshly. And because of this, they're easily drained by interactions with other people. Number nine, appearing tense in group settings. Do you often feel awkward or tense in a group? People with social anxiety disorder realize that their level of fear is excessive 
which can cause individuals to fear being judged or rejected for appearing anxious, blushing, sweating, or coming across as incompetent or boring. This may lead to avoidance of social situations or enduring them with a sense of distress. Number 10, creating a false time constraint. Do you come up with false excuses to leave early from a social interaction so that you don't feel stressed? Someone with social anxiety may create a false time constraint to avoid social interactions and to ensure that they don't feel trapped in them. Does this sound like you? Do you find yourself doing any of these signs? Social interaction can be stressful and draining, but they'll always be a part of life. You can use various coping methods and slowly come out of your comfort zone, but you don't have to do it alone. If you or your loved ones exhibit any of these signs, please consult a mental health professional for help. Did you find this video valuable? Tell us in the comments below. Please like and share it with friends that might find use in this video too. Make sure to subscribe to Psych2Go and hit the notification bell for more content. All the references used are added in the description box below. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.